Didi, most of my friends in the city have email accounts. Even I am curious to have one. Can I also open an email account? Sure, Rohan. You can also open an email account through various email services. But how, Didi? I know nothing about email. Okay, let me show you how you can open an account through an email service. Great, Didi. Email or electronic mail is the method of exchanging messages on the internet. An email contains various sections, recipients field, subject field and message area. You need to have an email account to use this application. Many web-based free email services are available like Gmail, Yahoo and Hotmail. You can create your own email account in any or all of these websites. Let us learn about how you can create and operate a Gmail account. To create an email account, first open a web browser. Now type www.gmail.com in address bar. Then click on the go button or press enter. After that click on the create an account button. Now fill the online registration form. Then click on the next steps button. And then click on the continue to Gmail button. You can now use the email account. To access your email account, you first need to sign in. For this, first go to the Gmail homepage and type your username and password. Then click on sign in at the bottom. You can now view your accounts page. Various links are displayed on the page like inbox, starred, important, sent mail, drafts and compose. These links contain related email items. Inbox contains all your incoming mails. By clicking on inbox, you can access all emails that you have received. You can also chat with your friends who are online. On the right section, you can see all the emails that you have received and by clicking on them, you can open each of them to view it. If you want to reply to the sender of an email, you just need to click on the arrow displayed on the right side of the email and then click on the reply button. A reply box is displayed with the recipient's email ID filled in the To field. Type your reply in the message text area and then click on the Send button on the top to send your email. Didi, how can I send an email to any of my friends? It's very easy. Just follow these steps. First, click on the Compose button and a new message window is displayed. Then, type the email ID of the person whom you want to send the email in the To field. You can send the email to multiple persons by adding their email IDs in the To field using a comma. Now, in the Subject field, type the subject of your message. After that, Type your message in the message area. You can also attach documents or pictures with the message by clicking on Attach a file link just below the subject box. The formatting buttons just on top of the message area allows you to format your message according to your need. And then click on the Send button to send your message. All the successfully sent emails are stored in the sent mail folder. Some of your incomplete emails are stored in the drafts folder. 
you can complete these drafts any time and send it. To compose a new message, first click on New or Compose Mail. Then, click the To box and type the email address of the person you wish to send your message. If you wish to send a copy of your message to another person, type the email address of that person in the CC box. CC stands for Carbon Copy. Now, type a short title of your message in the subject box. And then, click on the blank space below the subject box. This is the place where you can type your message. Now, what should I do if I wish to reply to an email from one of my friends? These are the steps to reply to an email. First, select the message. Then, click Reply. Now, you will be directed to the Compose page. The sender's email address and subject will be already filled in. Now, click on the space below the subject box. Type your message. If you wish to save the message as a draft, click Save Draft or Save Now and then click Send to send your message. You can also send a picture, a file or a document with your message by attaching it with your email message. First, click on the Attach Files icon. A new window will pop up asking you to select the file from the folder where you would have saved it. Browse and then click on the file you want to attach. Then click Open on the window. The file you attached is displayed below the subject box. Then click Send to send your message. To delete a message or several messages, first click Inbox. Then click on the check boxes beside the messages you want to delete and then click the Delete icon on top of the page. First, find the Sign Out link mostly on the right side of your email account. Click Sign Out to exit from your email account. Select the Reply option to send an email to the one that you have received it from. Select Reply All option to send an email to all the email IDs mentioned in the email that you received. If you want to send a particular email to a person whose email ID has not been added in any of the fields, then you can forward the email to him or her by using the forward button. You just need to type the email ID of that person and click on send. Attachments are files that are sent along with email messages like reports, documents and photos. Now, let me see you log into your account, compose an email, attach a photo and send it to one of your friend. Yes. I am so interested in trying it myself. Step 1. In the Gmail home page, enter your email ID and password and click on Sign In. Step 2. Click on Compose button. A new message window will be displayed. Step 3. Type your friend's email ID in the To field. Step 4. In the Subject field, type Subject of your message. Step 5. Click on Attach file to attach a photo. Step 6. A new window will be displayed. Select Photo and click Open. Step 7. In the Message box, type your message. Step 8. Press Send button to send the email. There are various interesting ways through which you can use the internet. One of it is that you can also send voicemails or use the internet as a mobile phone. Really Didi? Wow! That's so exciting! 
Yes, Rohan, there are services that makes internet telephone possible. Can you tell me about some of them, please? Sure, let's discuss about such services now. Voice over internet protocol is a technology used for internet phone services. Through VOIP, calls can be made on the internet using a VOIP service provider and standard computer audio systems. VOIP offers a substantial cost saving over traditional long distance telephone calls. The primary example of VOIP is Skype. Let's now learn how to download and install Skype. Skype is a communication tool which allows you to talk through internet to anyone in any part of the world for free. You can make a call from your computer or laptop to other Skype users for free and to landlines or mobile phones for a fee. Skype has features like instant messaging, file transfer, voice calls and video calls. Steps in downloading and installing Skype. First, click on Start button and then click Internet Explorer. Once Internet Explorer is opened, then type www.skype.com in the address bar. Now, click on the Go button or press Enter. The Skype home page is now open. Then, click on Download link. Computer is selected by default in Device section. After that, click on Get Skype for Windows desktop button. The opening Skype setup.exe appears. Now, click on Save button and save the file in an appropriate location on your computer. To install the application, go to the location where setup file is saved and then double click on the Skype setup.exe file. Open File Security Warning appears. Next, click on Run button to start the installation. Now, select English in Language drop down menu and then click I agree Next button. Then, click on Continue button. The Skype installation starts. Wait for the installation to complete. Once installation is complete, then click on Create an account button. A sign up web page appears. Now, fill the registration form with the required details. Next, enter the security words displayed in the box and then click on I agree continue button. Your Skype account is created. Now, I will teach you how to interact with contacts by using Skype. Yes, please do. All this is so very interesting. To start Skype, enter your Skype name and password and then click on Sign me in button. Now you need to add contacts on Skype. Click on the contacts menu option, select add contact and then select search Skype directory. Provide the details of the person you wish to add. It asks for email, phone number, name and Skype name details. Search the contact and then click add button to add the contact. A contact request book is displayed. Click send request button. When the person accepts your request, his or her name will appear on your contact list. You can interact with your contacts by selecting the contact that is online. The green check mark appears beside the contact name showing that the contact is online. Click on Contacts tab. Click on the name of the person with whom you want to have a chat conversation with. A chat window with the person's name appears. Place your cursor in the chat box and start typing your messages. Click Send or press Enter to send the message. For voice call, click on Call button. If contact accepts your call, then you can talk to him or her. To end the call, click on End Call button. 
If there is web camera installed on your computer, then you can make a video call as well. Click on video call button to start the video call. You can also share files to the contact by selecting the contact. Select conversation button, select send and then file button. Browse and select the file you want to send and then click open. Your contact can also send you any file and it will come in the notification window in contact list as orange check marks. You can receive the file by clicking the save as button. Choose the location you want to save and then click on save button which appears in dialog box. To open file, click open file or click show in folder. Once you are done using Skype, click Skype and select sign out button. You are now signed out of your Skype account. Now, let me see you using Skype by yourself. Definitely! Step 1. Start Skype. Step 2. Enter your Skype name and password and then click on Sign In. Step 3. Click on Contact tab and select the friend with whom you want to chat. Step 4. Click on Call or Video Call button to start the conversation. It will start connecting you to the friend with whom you want to chat. Let me now show you another such service which you can use for similar purpose. It is called Hangout. Hangout? Yes, Hangout. It is an instant messaging and video chat platform developed by Google. It is the composite version of three messaging products of Google, namely Talk, Google Plus Messenger and Hangout. Hangout allows users to hold conversations between two or more users. There are many features available in Hangout application. Follow these steps to start using Hangout. First, creating a Hangout, sign in to Google+. Google Plus is a social networking site that is designed for Google account holders. Now, find the Hangout frame. The Hangouts are located on the right-hand side of the Google Plus page. Next, create a new Hangout. Click the New Hangout field at the top of the Hangouts list. The list will change to a list of your contacts and Google Plus circles. Check the box next to the names of people that you want to add to the Hangout. You can also search for people and circles by typing the name, email address or phone number on the search box. Now start chatting in Google Plus Hangout. To start chatting, click on the person with whom you want to chat. A small window as shown below will appear. Type the text in send a message box and then press enter. If you want to add emoji to your conversation, then click or tap the smiley face on the left side of the chat field. A list of emoticons and emoji that you can use will open. They are separated into categories which you can navigate by selecting the icons at the top of the emoticon screen. You can add images to your hangout by clicking the camera icon on the right side of your chat field. This will open the select a photo from your computer or an option menu on mobile devices. You can use your webcam or phone's camera to take photos and share them or you can add photos from the other sources such as your computer's or phone's memory. To turn the chat into a video chat, click the video camera button in the top of the chat box. The other person will receive a notification that you are attempting to start a video chat. You can video chat on both computer and mobile devices. 
If you want to adjust your chat settings, then click on the gear icon in the chat window to choose your archive settings. You can also block the person you are chatting with. If using a mobile device, press the menu button and select your options in the menu that appears. You can also hang out in group by clicking on group hangout button on the top left corner of the chat window. Click on the check box to form a group in which you want to hang out. You can also save the chat onto YouTube for viewing anytime in future. Was not that interesting? Now, let's take part in this related activity. Rohan, nowadays many people in the world use Facebook or other such social media services to communicate with each other. Didi, what is Facebook and social media services? I am not understanding. Oh, don't worry. I will tell you about them. Social media refers to the means of interactions among people in which they create, share and exchange information through internet networks. Social media is the collection of online communications channels dedicated to community-based input, interaction content sharing and collaboration. Examples of social media applications are Facebook, blogs, Twitter and LinkedIn. There are different types of social media. Let's learn more about them. The types of social media tools are online chatting, blog, social networking. Online chat may refer to any kind of communication over the internet that offers a real-time transmission of text messages from sender to receiver. Online chat may address point-to-point -point communications as well as multicast communications from one sender to many receivers and voice and video chat. Examples are Yahoo Messenger and GTalk. Blog is an online journal kept by an individual, group or organization. Blogs can be used for sharing information about your subject on the internet, share news about recent events or developments and share interesting discussions and debates by writing about them. Examples of blogs are Blogger and WordPress. Social networking is a platform to build social networks or social relations among people who share interests, activities, backgrounds or real-life connections. Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn are some examples of social networking sites. Facebook is currently the most popular social media services. Let me show you how you can use this service. Sure, Didi. I am so interested in Facebook. These are the steps to use Facebook. First, open a web browser. Then, type www.facebook.com in address bar and then click Go button or press Enter. In the sign up, fill in the registration details in the boxes and then click on the sign up button. It will take you to three steps process to complete the registration. Now click on find friends button to add contacts. You can skip this process at this stage. Next fill out profile information page. You can skip this process as well. You can set your profile picture by uploading a photograph present in your computer. After that, click Save and Continue button and your Facebook account is created. You can add people by typing their name or email in Find People You Know section. You can upload your status as well on Facebook. To do that, click on Status button and then type your status and then click Post button. In Timeline tab, you can specify about your workplace, city, school and your relationship status. 
The timeline bar also contains search box where you can search your friends by typing his name and then you can visit his profile. Click on add friend button to send the friend request to him or her. Once you are done with Facebook, you can sign out by clicking setting icon on Facebook bar and then click on log out option. Now you have a Facebook account. When you visit next time, sign in using your email or phone number and then type your password. Having a Facebook account allows you to post status messages which can be seen by your friends. To post a status message, click on the blank box under update status and type your status message. Then click post at the bottom. To comment on a post or photo or any content, click the comment link below a message. A text box will pop up. Type your comment on the box and press enter. Facebook bar tells you about friend requests, messages and recent activities by your friends. The given figure highlights the same. Facebook is changing the way many businesses interact with their customers and promote their company. Big brands and small stores are successfully using Facebook's potential to reach new customers in their communities. One of the ways to use Facebook for promoting business is creating a page for the business. Since the resource is free, you can easily utilize the full potential of the site. To create a profile for your business, click Create a page located at the bottom of the home page. Click Local Business or Place. Select a category from the options listed in the drop-down box and fill in the details in the form like address, city and contact number. Then click on Get Started button. In the next window, you need to fill in all the details about your business. You will have to provide some basic information about the business that you are promoting. To add a profile picture to your page, you may either upload a file available on your computer or import it from your website. You can add the page to your favorites list. You can reach more people by adding a payment mode on your business page. If you do not wish to add any payment method, you can skip this step. Your business page has been created and will appear like this. If you wish to add a payment method to your page, this window appears. Select your country as India. Once you click on the continue button, a window appears which will ask you for your card details. Fill in your card details and click on submit. Facebook will save your payment information for future purchases. You can always remove or manage this information in your account settings. You can make your page popular by suggesting your page to your friends. In order to invite friends to like your page, click on Build Audience tab. Click on Invite Friends. A list of all your friends' names will appear. You can select and invite them to visit your Facebook page. You may change the information profile picture on your page by clicking on the various icons given on the page itself. To post a status message, click to place your cursor in the box under status. Type your message and click share. To comment on a post or photo or any content, click the comment link. Click to place your cursor in the comment box. Type your comment and press enter on your keyboard. Signing out of your Facebook account. To sign out of Facebook, click on the drop down arrow button that appears on the top right hand side of the home page. Click on log out to exit from your Facebook account. Now try to use Facebook yourself. Yes, now that I know so much. Step 1. In the Facebook home page, enter your email ID or phone 
and password and then click on login. Step 2. Click on add photos or video to attach a photo as a status update. Step 3. A new window will be displayed. Select photo and click open. Step 4. Write your status update in the text box. Step 5. Click on post to publish your status update. Let's now learn about another powerful social networking service called Twitter. Through Twitter, you can reach out and share your views effectively with millions of users across the world. It is free and is used by many people to interact and actively share information. These are the steps to use Twitter. First, to create an account in Twitter, go to www.twitter.com and sign up by filling required information. Once you have created your account or logged in successfully, you can now start using Twitter. If you want to share some information with your followers, type your message in the Compose New Tweet text box and then click on the Tweet button below. Tweets are limited to 140 characters only, so keep your tweets concise. To start following the persons of whom you want to receive tweets, use the menu tab displayed in the home page and then click on Follow button displayed under Who to Follow section. To add someone to a list, go to their profile and click the person icon in the toolbar and select Add or remove from lists. A menu with your lists will pop up. You can choose to create a new list or add the person to an existing one. To upload your profile picture, click on Settings in the drop down menu below your username. Then click on Profile option and then click on Choose file to select a file from your computer where you have saved your picture. This picture will be displayed with your name across the side. It must be a JPG, GIF or PNG file and must be smaller than 700 KB. You can fill the remaining profile details in the displayed page like your name, location or website. If you wish to post your tweets to Facebook, click the Posts your tweets to Facebook button at the bottom of the profile page. Review the tweet media and privacy settings. These are listed under the account tab of your settings. Check the applicable boxes and click Save Changes button. Change your password periodically. Protect your account by periodically changing your password. To do so, click on the Password tab under Settings. Enter your old password, then your new one twice. Click on Change when finished. Decide when you want to receive emails from Twitter. Under the Notifications tab, there is a list of actions. Check the boxes next to those actions for which you would like to receive an email. Every profile begins with a default background and color scheme. You can personalize it by these steps. Click on the Design tab of Settings. You can choose from one of the background images provided or upload your own by clicking on the button that says Change Background Image. Then click on Choose File to upload one from your computer. You can also play with the color scheme by clicking Change Design Colors. Let's see if you can use Twitter by yourself now. Step 1. In the Twitter home page, enter your email ID or phone or username and password and then click on Sign In. Step 2. To tweet with a picture, type your message in the Compose new tweet text box. Step 3. Click on Add photo. A new window will be displayed. Select photo and click 
open. The photo will be uploaded. Step 4. Click on the Tweet button. Now Rohan, I am sure you will be able to operate on Facebook and Twitter very easily. Sure Didi, I definitely can. Rohan, do you know there are also some websites that offer a lot of information that you can use? No Didi, which are these sites? Well, YouTube and Wikipedia are two of the popular websites through which you can share or get information. YouTube is a free website offered by Google. It is a video sharing platform founded in February 2005. YouTube allows billions of people to discover, watch and share originally created videos. YouTube provides a forum for people to connect, inform and inspire others across the globe and acts as a distribution platform for original content creators and advertisers large and small. To run YouTube, one needs to have internet connectivity, Adobe Flash Player and a speaker. First, click on Start button and open Internet Explorer. Then type www.youtube.com in address bar and click on Go button or press Enter. The YouTube web page loads. You can see the search bar on top of the page. Now type search items or search keywords and click on the search button or press Enter. A list of video links against the search items appears on the screen. Then click on the link to watch the related video. You see the selected video is played in the video player. You can see various controllers below the video player like play or pause, volume or mute, total time, change quality and full screen. You can find details and comments on the video below the video. You do not need an account to view popular and general videos on YouTube, but you need a login account to view private videos. To sign in to YouTube using your Google account, click on the sign in button on top right hand corner of the YouTube web page. The Google sign in page appears. Now type your email and password and click on sign in button. If you do not have Google account then you need to create it. The YouTube page will appear. Click on upload button next to search box. For first time users it will ask you to set up your channel and give some personal details like gender and date of birth. Fill in those details and click on the Continue to Upload button. Then click on Select Files to Upload link. Now browse through your computer and select the video you want to upload. Click on Open button. You see the uploading starts and the progress is displayed on the web page. When uploading gets completed, a message Upload Complete appears and the link to the video is also displayed. You can view the video later in YouTube. You can add the title and description and set the privacy settings of the video in the displayed page. Once video is uploaded, you can change the privacy setting or delete the video using Video Manager. First, click on Video Manager. Then, click on Video to be deleted. Then click on Actions menu and select Delete. A confirmation message is displayed. Click on Yes, Delete button and your video gets deleted. Let's see if you can use YouTube by yourself now. Sure! Step 1. In the YouTube home page, click on Sign in. Step 2. Google account page will be displayed. Enter your Gmail ID and password and then click on Sign In. Step 3. To upload videos, click on 
upload button step 4 click on select files step 5 select the video you want to upload and click on open button the uploading will start step 6 to close your account click on sign out wikipedia is a web application which allows anyone to read or edit content that has been placed on the website steps to use wikipedia to access information are as follows first go to wikipedia website www.wikipedia.org then type the text in the search bar choose the language and then press the arrow button the next page will display the information required by you. The top portion of the page consists of contents of the page having hyperlink to each section of the page. You can click on a particular section to directly go to that section. Generally, all pages have See Also as the second last section where related links are displayed and references as the last section where various links to related articles are given. These are the steps for editing an article in Wikipedia. First, sign in if you are an existing user or create an account. After successful sign-in, click on the edit link. Now that will open an editing window containing the text for that page. Type in something or make changes to the text you find there. If you do not see edit option at the top of the page, it means that the page is protected from editing, probably because of high incidence of malicious changes. If you are making small changes in one part of the article, click on edit link adjacent to that section. This will allow you to make changes in one part of the article without opening the whole article. Now, briefly explain your changes in the edit summary box at the bottom of the page. Preview your changes by clicking on show preview button. Once you are satisfied with your work, hit the save page button. There are a few things you should keep in mind before creating a page in Wikipedia. Search for an existing article before creating a page. Before creating an article, try to make sure there is not already an article on the same topic, perhaps under a slightly different name. Gather sources for the information you will be writing about. Detailed instructions on ways of sourcing articles can be found on WP CITE page of the Wikipedia. Wikipedia does not allow creating a page related to these topics. Advertising your product for business, personal essays or original research, non-notable topics without enough citations, article directly or indirectly related to yourself, attacks on a person or an organization, advocacy and controversial topics, local interest articles, breaking news events. Here are a few tips to contribute your article to Wikipedia. Do not add promotional language. Maintain a neutral, objective tone in any content you add or edit. Disclose your relationship to the client or topic. Create a page using personal accounts. Recruit help. Seek out a sponsor who has worked on similar articles or submit ideas for article topics. These are the steps to create a page in Wikipedia. First, sign in to your account if you are an existing user or create a new one if you are not. In the search box, type the title of your article, then click Go. 
if the page you requested does not exist, the search page reports, you may create the page followed by the article name in red. Then you can click the red article name to start creating your article. It will open a blank editing window. Read the instructions displayed at the top of page and then start writing content in a window. Now, briefly explain your changes in the Edit Summary box at the bottom of the page. Preview your changes by clicking on Show Preview button. If you want to compare your changes to the text you altered, hit the Show Changes button. Once you are satisfied with your work, hit the Save Page button. Let's see if you can use Wikipedia by yourself now. Okay, step 1. In the Wikipedia home page, select the language of your preference. Step 2. Click on Login and enter your username and password. Step 3. In search box, type the title of your article to ensure that the same title does not exist already. Step 4. If page does not exist, click on article name highlighted in red color to start creating your article. Step 5. It will display a blank editing window. Start writing the content in the window. Step 6. To publish your article, press Save Page. Your page will be created. I am sure that now you know a lot about YouTube and Wikipedia. Introduction to Messaging Service WhatsApp There are also several ways to be in close touch with your friends and relatives. This is through WhatsApp. Didi, what is WhatsApp? WhatsApp is an ad-free mobile messaging app that allows users to exchange text and media messages through the internet data plan or through Wi-Fi. Users do not have to pay for SMS, but a company charges a small annual fee for using the app. Steps for using WhatsApp in Android-based smartphones or tablets To use WhatsApp in your phone, follow these steps. First, Go to Menu option on your smartphone or tablet. In Menu, tap on Play Store option. You can discover apps and content by navigating the on-screen menus which include apps, books, movies and games. Now, click on one of the displayed options. Now, type WhatsApp in the search bar. List of applications will pop up. Find the correct one and then click on it. Now click on Install button to install the WhatsApp on your smartphone or tablet. Now to open WhatsApp, click on its icon. Now it will ask you to enter your phone number for verification purpose. Enter the same and then press OK button. Now, enter your name and upload profile photo if you want and then press Next. WhatsApp will automatically import your entire contacts list having WhatsApp in their devices. Search the contact with whom you want to chat in the search bar and then click on that contact. Now, the adjacent screen will appear. You can type your message in the box provided at the bottom of the screen. Emoji can be inserted in the message using the button provided at the bottom left corner. Audio messages can be sent using the button provided at the bottom right corner. Now to send videos, photos, your current location and contact, click on top right button and choose the option according to your preference. Now, to use other features of the application, click on the right or left button of your smartphone and the given screen will appear. Click on New Chat button if you want to start a chat with a person. 
Click on New Group button to create a group of two or more people to chat simultaneously at one place. Click on New Broadcast List to send same messages to more than one recipient. Click on Contact button to go to Contact List. If you want to update your status, then click on Status button. The adjacent screen will appear. You can choose any one of the status given by default or you can write one on your own. If you want to choose your settings, then click on Settings button. Adjacent screen will appear. Click on Help button to seek more information. Click on Profile button to change your name and profile photo. Click on Account button to change privacy settings, to make payment, to change number, to delete account and to know network usage. Click on Chat settings, notifications and contacts button to change your chatting, notifications and contacts related settings. Let's see if you can use WhatsApp by yourself now. Sure. Step 1. Click on the WhatsApp icon on your mobile phone or tablet. It will display a list of your contacts who use WhatsApp. Step 2. Click on the name with whom you want to chat. A messaging window will open. Step 3. Type your message and click on Send. Step 4. To send a video or photo, click on Attach icon on top of the chat screen. Step 5. The gallery box will open. Click or choose the video or photo you want to send. It will then automatically start sending the file. So Rohan, you can now see how easy it is to use an online social networking service to communicate. However, there are some legal issues which have arisen due to misuse of these sites. Really? What kind of legal issues? Legal issues of social networking are related to online acts or omissions that are resulting in giving rise to civil and criminal liabilities. Social networking media is an intermediary within the meaning of India's Information Technology Act 2000, IT Act 2000. Thus, social networking sites are liable for various acts or omissions that are punishable under the laws. For instance, social networking sites are liable for online IPRs violations including online copyright violations in India. Some unlawful activities that may be associated with use of social media are as follows. Freedom of speech, search and seizure issues, copyright infringement and other intellectual rights, breach of individual publicity and privacy rights, obscene or defamatory content or statements. Punishment for sending offensive messages through communication service. Indian Constitution has some rules and regulations covered under Section 66A of IT Act. Rules and punishment for violating those rules are as follows. Any person who sends by means of a computer resource or a communication device any information that is grossly offensive or has menacing character, any information which he knows to be false but for the purpose of causing annoyance, inconvenience, danger, obstruction, insult, injury, criminal intimidation, enmity, hatred or ill will persistently by making use of such computer resource or a communication device. Any electronic mail or electronic mail message for the purpose of causing annoyance or inconvenience or to deceive or to mislead the addressee or recipient about the origin of such messages 
shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to three years and with fine. Didi, I did not know that we can do so many things from a smartphone or a tablet. This is so exciting. Yes, it is, Rohan. So far, you have learned a lot about messaging services. Let's now take part in this activity.